Welcome to today's broadcast. I'm reading from the book of 2 Corinthians, chapter 6, verse number 1, in the New Contemporary Version. So, we beg you, do not let the grace that you receive from God be for nothing. <laughs> uh, since Monday, we started talking about one major primary pipeline of grace is Jesus. We receive grace and truth from Jesus, according to John chapter 1, verse number 17. But today, I've just found out that it is possible to receive Jesus and receive grace for nothing. King James call it in vain. That is, you are born again, yeah, you've embraced Jesus, yeah, and you have double grace, yeah, but it's, re it's received in vain. It's not useful, all right? So, as it were, we could say that most of the believers um, who, who are not enjoying grace, you know, is because they've not had contact with grace. But this scripture says, no, it is possible to receive grace for nothing. Do not let the grace that you have received from God be for nothing. So how can someone receive the grace of God for nothing? Simple. In the book of Romans chapter number 5, verse number 17, that we have read last week, the scripture said that uh, they that receive abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness. Yeah. So, the second most important atmosphere where grace will um, be useful is an atmosphere of righteousness. Grace empowers us to live right. Grace can't work when dominion of sin is in place, shall we continue in sin? That's the scripture. That grace may abound. He said no. So, one major way not to receive the grace of God in vain is to receive the grace of God and allow it to help us overcome weaknesses of sin. I like to read First Corinthians chapter six and verse number twenty. Don't you see that you cannot keep on living however you please? This message Bible. Most of the thing we do that are against God's will is the play of sin. We want to enjoy drinking. We want to enjoy smoking. Say, I have fun when I'm going to fornication or when I have illicit sex. So this scripture is saying, uh, don't you see that you cannot keep on living however you please? Squandering what God paid such a high price for. So let people see God in and through your body. God wants you to use your body for his glory. So to allow the grace of God not to be for nothing, you must let that grace cover you up to live in righteousness. Grace brings forgiveness. Good. But grace also brings the practice of righteousness. So you must constantly remember that you don't need to just embrace Jesus. His character must rub on you. Whatever the word of God has said you shouldn't do, you shouldn't do it. And now this scripture is saying, let God and people see in through your body. Your body must be used as a carrier of grace. You know, it's just like, no, I'm wearing white. I'm not going to allow anything to stain me exactly. I'm not going to allow anything to destroy the grace of God that I carry. I don't want to receive the grace of God in vain. What is the use of having connection and contact with grace that is not bringing you anything? All because you are living in unrighteousness. Yeah. Shall we continue in sin after we are born again that grace may abound? No. The grace of God empowers us to say no to unrighteousness, to say no to lying, to say no to drinking alcohol, to say no to drunkenness, to say no to smoking, to say no to fornication, to adultery, to idolatry. Every of those things that the word of God has already said, don't practice, don't get yourself involved in it. Let the grace of God be available to let go of it. So living in righteousness will make you enjoy the grace of God. Have a wonderful day as you write that under the Brokers, living in righteousness will make you enjoy the grace of God. God bless you.